How's it going guys? So in today's Blender tutorial, we're gonna be creating this cinematic text animation. It's mostly done in geometry nodes, so here's how it's going to work. First thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and simply model the text. Then we're gonna use cell fracture to break it up. Then the rest is going to be done in geometry nodes. We're gonna use geometry nodes to procedurally move everything around so that it's non-destructive and really controllable. We're gonna animate the camera, rotate the text, add some simple glass materials, do a really quick geometry nodes particle system, and then we're going to render it. It's pretty straightforward and really fun to do, and there's a lot of things to learn here that you can apply into other tutorials, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our text. So, Shift A, add your text, and we'll go over here and add and center it out here. We'll go ahead and select a font. You can go ahead and select one from your font library. I went ahead and pre-selected one. This one's called uh, Avalors. It's a free one. And then I'm going to hit tab and type in whatever I want. So we're going to call it title. I'm going to hit RX90 to center, uh, to rotate him. And we are going to extrude it to whatever you want it to be. I like it to be pretty thick. And we're going to go ahead and right click convert to, convert to mesh. Now, if I hit tab and look at this topology, it's pretty bad. It's not really gonna serve us uh, very well in this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the modifiers, add a modifier and get in a remesh modifier. And then we're just gonna use sharp, click on remove disconnected and uh, keep it right about there. And I'm gonna hover over here and hit uh, control A. We're just gonna apply that. We may not need to, that might not be necessary, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna hit F3. Well, first, if you don't have it installed or if you don't have it enabled, it comes with Blender by default, but it's called Cell Fracture. So go ahead and enable the Cell Fracture add-on, and then I'm gonna hit F3 and type in Cell Fracture. And then what I'm gonna do now, actually, before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and use our annotation. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key, and click Front. And let's go ahead and select the places where we want this to be kind of fractured. Um, we're going to click on the annotate and maybe right here, here, here. And go ahead and annotate quite a, quite a bit. The more annotations in this case, the more particles you're going to get. So it's, it's going to look pretty cool. Um, you know, go nuts with it. All right, so this looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go here to cell fracture and then click on uh, annotation pencil. I'm gonna do a thousand particles, even though it's not gonna totally give me a thousand, but if you're on the laptop, maybe go to 250 to 500. I'm gonna keep it at a thousand. We're gonna give a little bit of noise, recursion of two, and we're gonna do on the uh, size, we're gonna do random, and then I'm gonna click okay. All right, we're all done, and what right here in the outliner, just go ahead and hide that main text so we can see everything, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, erase all of my annotations right here. Okay, so this is it, all of our broken up pieces. It looks pretty awesome. And then what you can do is go ahead and select them all. I'm gonna hit A just to make sure everything is selected. Hit M, new collection. I'm gonna call it cell. And now everything is in a collection. I'm just gonna hit that little check mark. It looks like I have 683 um, pieces. And I'm gonna hit the check mark and remove it. Let's go ahead and get a plane, go to geometry nodes. Now everything is gonna be done in geometry nodes until we get to shading. So I'm gonna click new here and we're gonna drag in that cell collection and plop it there and that we're gonna, that's gonna alleviate the need for this input. So now we have everything here. What we need to get is a set position node. We're gonna get a combine XYZ and that's going to make sure that we're only moving it on this axis and allows us to select that. So put that into the offset and we're gonna get a random value node. And plug the uh, random value into the Y axis and then very important, click on separate children. That's gonna allow it to uh, you know, separate all those individual pieces in the collection. Otherwise it's gonna handle it like a singular object. And then we can bring this, I mean, pretty far down. 
uh, something like this. Now we need to allow these objects to actually rotate. So let's get a rotate instances node and get another random value. But in this case, we want a little bit more control here on these rotations. So we're gonna to go to vector and that's gonna give us more uh, selection process or selection, whatever the word is. And then now you can actually rotate all of these guys together, which is really awesome. Um, so we can actually start the keyframing process, but here is our rotations and you can get these guys to go this way or backwards like this. So it's really, really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a timeline right here. And I'm gonna give myself 300 frames, but we're only gonna animate 250. I don't know where this keyframe came from, but we're gonna delete it. So let's go, let's start here at frame one. And then right here on the min, hit I. And then on these guys, let's go ahead and let's see, where do we, how do we want them to animate? Something like this. We're gonna hit I. And let's go to frame 250. So. 250, go to zero, hit I here, go to zero, oops, hit I, and then now that's going to animate. Let's go ahead and get our camera going. So we'll go back to layout, camera. So I'm gonna go here to the front view, get a camera, and then we'll pull it back. I'm gonna hit G and middle click to kind of position it where I want it to be. Perfect. So now we can animate him where he needs to be. So we want him to stop at this position. By him, I mean the camera. So we're gonna to go to frame 250. And then right here on the Y, click a keyframe, go to the back, and then I'm gonna hit G and middle click and bring him forward because he is also going to animate. And then the last thing I'm going to do is right here on this text, we're gonna go ahead and rotate him. So rotate him like that maybe. Go to frame 250, zero, enter. So now here's our complete animation. Just kind of flying through, camera's going backwards, everything's coming through, rotations and settle. Perfect. All right, let's add a little particle system so that our camera uh, has something cool going on around it. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of a boring black background. We want something else going on here. So we're gonna get another plane and feel free to name it particle if you don't wanna get confused. And then um, let's go ahead and remove the timeline. We're gonna go back to geometry nodes. Let's get a cube. And then we're gonna size him Actually, let's size him scale-wise properly, and then we'll get him to be like that. That's probably going to look good. Something like this, perfect, okay. And then we're gonna get a mesh to volume. So mesh to volume, and then a distribute points in volume. And this is a great way to get a quick particle system where there's a bunch of particles amongst your already existing uh, models, which is really cool. And then we're gonna get instance on points. And we're gonna get Icosphere maybe, who knows? I'm sure I'll be corrected in the comment section. Um, and then we'll bring these guys down and then go to the camera view and then bring these guys way farther down. And then we can bring that density up a little bit. And then if I view this, how does this look with our particles? Oh, nice, okay, so they're flying by, they're looking nice, and then when we're done, we're gonna have a nice collection of particles in the background, and that's what we're looking for. All right, let's go ahead and save, because we did not save, so we're gonna call this oops. All right, so here is what we have. Let's go ahead and create materials for what we have going on. So let's create one material, call it glass, and let's make another material, call it particle. Particle material is going to be emissive. Give it a slight blue, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy. I'm gonna go ahead and hover over here and hit Control C. Give this a strength of 10. And on glass, we are gonna make it uh, transmissive. And let's head over to geometry nodes and apply these materials. So Shift A, 
set material and we're going to get glass and then on the particle geometry node we're going to do the same thing set material and we're going to get particle so if we go here to the render view we're already going to, are we going to see some things in the world we're going to bring this down to black now we just see our particles particles are definitely too big so point let's say 0 0.2 Let's do 0 0.05. All right, cool. Now they look a little bit more like stars. So here in the glass, let's go here to shading. Go here. I'm going to watch it in cycles because we are going to be rendering in cycles. So here on the principle, we're using the glass material. You can see it there. Let's go ahead and get in a color ramp. Plug this into the emission. And then we're going to get in a layer weight and do uh, facing. And then here on that slot number two in particle, let me hit the period key, hover over, hit control C, go back to, to the glass, and then hover over here, hit control V, and that's gonna keep all of our colors consistent. Bring your roughness down, but this, this part's totally up to you. Um, here on the blend, Something like this. We really just want it to kind of look like it's reflecting light, but we are faking a reflection of light, which gives us a lot of control here. And here we are. We have, we have glass, and it looks really, really cool. Pretty realistic, too, I think. If we want to kind of preview how this is going to look here at, as a final animation, it's going to be uh, whack and jumpy because we are running cycles here trying to see it real time so I'll just click around and there we have it what I'm going to do is to create more realism here we're gonna get some depth of field so let's go here click on depth of field I'm gonna accentuate it a good bit just to make sure we have it solid I know we can use it empty but I am lazy all right that looks like it's in focus so now, as we're flying through, I'm going to give my f-stop of uh, 2.3. No, we'll do 2.8. We'll do a classic 2.8. Cool. So as we're flying through, these guys are going to be out of focus. It's going to look really sweet until we arrive at our destination here. In fact, honestly, it's a little bit... We'll do an f-stop of 3. There we go. So as we fly through, I know I should be using a render region. So as we fly through, we're going to see really nice animation. Cool. All right. We are, we are finished. We can go ahead and render this and add some compositing. We're going to call it a day. So let's go ahead and render this guy. Uh, pick your render settings. Whatever you are typically comfortable with is what's going to look good. So what I'm going to do here is um, my samples are at 300. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and let's see. We're going to go to our light paths. Click and drag. Make everything three except for volume. Make that zero. Turn off reflective and refractive. And render that out. We'll do a little bit of compositing next. All right, so let's head to compositing. We're going to click on use nodes. Shift A and get a viewer node. We're going to add a little bit of glare. I'm going to hit shift and right click. Sorry. Shift and left. Yeah, shift and right click. And to combine those, that's going to make sure you're going to actually animate these compositing effects. So we're going to go streaks to fog glow and maybe bring our mix down a few points just to give it a nice glow. And that is... Final, I'm not gonna denoise it. I don't really like denoising, so I'm gonna leave it. You can add it if you want. And let's just uh, get our export settings done and we will call it a day. So here, click on the printer icon. I'm gonna keep it at 1920 by 1080. I strongly suggest doing a PNG sequence and then you can compile it here in the uh, image sequence editor. If you don't wanna do that, we'll go to PNG to FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless, and render, render animation. And when you're done, you'll have an animation similar to mine here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some stuff out of this. There's a lot of things that you can apply to other things, and I love it. Uh, feel free to check out Real Time Materials. That really helps support the channel. Check me out on Patreon, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the next tutorial.